pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 
Well, it may cost them a deal. Well, and it could be foreclosed and take another yes. two, potentially two more years for the property to come back mm -hmm. available for sale, which First from what we've them. learned now, after this almost two years now that we've been going through this, um, that, I mean, just in less than a year, it's almost gone $3,000. So I don't know if the city really wants to take another two, potentially even longer, to get this settled and have somebody in there paying the bill. You know, if we can get this approval letter after tomorrow, then we can move forward. Somebody can move in there by potentially the end of May. <coughs> so our hope is that we can just, you know, get this moving forward so that we can get the home sold and be done with it. And then you guys have a new member of the community that's actually paying the bill rather than sitting there not getting paid and potentially going through another foreclosure. Mm -hmm. So. Right. So unfortunately, we cannot take any action on this. And I, I don't have to refer to she does have a accounting of the bill that shows line by line. You know, it shows that it's been no uh, activity. You know, does it show no activity in the water? So you have that. It shows the monthly charge every month, but there's not any like actual. Well, you have the usage. <coughs> so, um, but shows zero usage or no? So I mean, it's been locked off for, I specifically asked the city to lock it off, and I was told that it shouldn't occur anymore, so then, it, from what I was told last summer, was, last June, was that um, it shouldn't, it wouldn't go up anymore, and at that point it was only at 623. So now we're looking at almost $3,000 since I was told by the city there would be no more fees, and paid that bill to get it down to try and help this owner and get this property sold. <coughs> and we were told to come here tonight that you guys would here be, would be able to make this decision. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> whether it was just a matter of reducing it or whether it was a matter of actually clearing it entirely. I mean, he's an active Marine serving our country. He's been over fighting this war four different times. The only reason he had to move was because he got restationed. Otherwise, he'd still be here. He didn't have a choice. He was forced out of his home. Councilmember Holt, do you have a comment? I believe the governor just signed into uh, law <coughs> three weeks ago a bill protecting uh, servicemen that are uh, overseas from including more debt and uh, severely limiting their uh, the ability to charge interest on the debt that was been So, and I would be more than happy to look into that. I noticed the date on this bill is 228, um, and for this just the time before the council at this time, it really does need to go through a process and through the finance committee, and that's, and that's our rules. That's how we address these types of issues, and I'm going to have to do that and refer it to the finance committee and move forward from that. I'm really sorry, and I understand, and I certainly appreciate, you know, his service to our country. Well, I'll have to like make something up for HUD one and get it another day. I mean, get it to go one more day <coughs> so that you guys can give us a response the next day. Is it realistic to get it in two days after they meet? Unfortunately, it's going to have to go to committee and then it has to come back to council before we can make a decision. It cannot be made that fast. How long are we talking about this? There is a process that has to be followed. The only reason that we are just now coming to you is ordinarily short sale banks will pay these types of things, especially when it's a situation like this particular seller. Unfortunately, we only just found out on Friday, late in the <coughs> afternoon. You guys certainly weren't around. Um, and so we found out when the next exact meeting would be, and we came down here to do it. You know, it, well, I hope that there's some way you guys can escalate this in some way because, you know, we do risk losing, he risks losing us, you know, losing us completely. Not to mention, I mean, this last August, he's actually in the process of going through a military medical discharge because he just got actually disabled last August. He fell on the job and ruptured his spleen. So not only are we looking at this has been something he was forced to do, he didn't want to do this, had no other option, and now once he does come home and is actually discharged come this August, he's going to be unemployed and homeless. <laughs> and that's really a shame. I don't know what I can do to expedite the process, but unfortunately I can't. So my hands are tied. I'll have to be able to get to the finance committee tomorrow. So can I come back down to
answer tomorrow what's the likelihood that we can even get a reply. I mean, something to even get to the bank to show them that this is the situation. I, I think it's really going to kill our deal. It is because I literally have to have something that says that this is what is required to pay off this loan and have a payoff that says this will satisfy it. That's how specific the verbiage has to be on what I get. And you guys aren't going to give us anything. So our deal is going to be dead. We have like literally <coughs> like two days. She said, I'm, I got that message what, yesterday that says you have three days. It was on, I got it on Sunday through um, the system that they communicate with. You have three days to get us all the documents or else this offers out of, out of there. You know, we can start over. Basically, you have to start over. This has been something we've been negotiating with the bank for over a year now and finally got to the point where they're ready to issue an approval letter. And the only thing holding us up is this, because we've already got the buyer to take over the assessment. We've, you know, I mean, there's another the sewage, the sewage treatment. There's happens. other things that have been taken care yeah, of. I'm really and sorry. You know, we can take all these things into consideration. Did you have a comment? Uh, yeah, in, in addition to referring this to finance, uh, since it's contrary to code that we would stop accruing charges, can we maybe have a refresher on yeah, some scripted language for what we could, what that can tell people who block off, unless the meter is removed entirely and it is taken off the grid, it's going to continue accruing charges. I think that's wrong, though. Why? But because we continue well, paying yeah. for it. There's no service. But the, there's no water and we there's no sewage coming through. At point of order, I'm really sorry. We, um, we generally allow three minutes for yes. comment. And Thank you. Not a debate. Um, council members, well, depending on how finance committee shakes out tomorrow night, would be. Can we schedule a, a special meeting before the workshop next week to vote on this? I mean, I just, a week's better than two. So, um, it depends on what happens at the finance committee tomorrow night, and the council is willing to do that. I have no issue with that, but it would probably be, you know, it's going to have to still go back to a workshop for discussion. The soonest I think anything could happen would be um, next Monday. There'll have to be a discussion with the whole council. Yeah, I think there's a federal law that says a soldier that's been deployed cannot continue to accrue bills while he's on deployment. So I'm, I'm not sure where we're, we're getting this. But, uh, no, <coughs> we, we can't make a decision on the information that was just given to us tonight at this meeting. We have to investigate the information that was given to us and move forward from there. We were told last week that you could, though, I and mean, you're the mayor, and this is the council, and we were specifically told on Friday to come here, so you guys would be able to give us a response tonight, whether it was reducing it to a point where he could actually maybe pay it, or whether it was to wipe it all away, considering that the only reason he had to leave his home was because he was deployed. I mean, that's, that's what your people told us last Friday in addition to what the owner was told when he was deployed back in August of 2012, and then what I was told when I brought in, and I can show you the $800 payment I made last year, when I was at, when I specifically asked for it to get locked off so that it wouldn't occur any more charges, and when they told me that it wouldn't anyway because it was getting locked, because it was past due. So I think this is three different people that work for your city who have told us pretty much all the same thing. And now you're telling us something completely different than we were even told Friday. We were told you people are the ones who make this decision. Well, that is how our policy is and has been. <coughs> you're welcome to come to the finance committee. They'll be meeting in this room, I believe, at 6.30 right. tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Yeah, we did. Next on the agenda is my Do you still want to speak on this topic since we closed the, the public hearing off this evening? No. More than I'll, welcome to. I'll wait until the, the, the next hearing. Great. Thank, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you for coming tonight. <laughs> okay. Next is Elaine. I, I, I always ruin, I'm so sorry. How do I say it right? Gosanides. That's Greek. I'm Elaine Gosanides. I live at 102 Tacoma Boulevard South in Pacific. And um, it's apartment one, I don't know. So. Uh, 
important enough. But um, I actually am here for a heavy reason. Um, recently I had my first Japanese exchange student and um, from prior experience I learned that um, in Japan the police are not our friends. Um, which the um, you know previous Japanese exchange students we had that that was a concern because what if they get lost here in a foreign country far away from you know home and people they know and places they know and so you know I've made a point of you know trying to introduce them to the police in America and say hey these are our friends <laughs> and um, so I contacted Chief Hawkins and he set up a tour. And um, <laughs> I was really surprised because um, my ex my student, her name was Sai, was not the slightest bit intimidated because it turns out her uncle is a Japanese police officer. So instead, she acted like she won the lotto. Um, <laughs> I don't know anybody if anybody here has had any dealings with the Japanese culture, but they tend to be very reserved, conservative. I have never seen one squeal with delight. <laughs> And so, you know, it was just such a wonderful experience. They treated her like royalty. <laughs> and um, I'm sure she has plenty of stories to tell her family when she, um, well, she's home already, but I'm sure she had lots to tell them and pictures to show them. And, you know, I just think that the whole police department, how they treated her and, and our family for the tour and everything was just, you know, really wonderful. And I think that it really shows some great public service. And I just wanted to share that with everyone. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Okay, is there anyone else here that would like to participate in audience comments? Um, Council Mayor and Council my name is Carolyn Lake, good team authors. My address is 501 uh, Tacoma Avenue, um, 501 G Street in Tacoma, Washington. Um, I'm here representing various property owners. Um, we are here because the city issued a notice on March 14 that assessed 32 different properties, a total of $600,000 for a street flight. Um, the property owners since March 14th have been trying to scramble and get information and gather <coughs> resources to understand how the assessment came to be and how the um, valuations were calculated for their property. Um, they have been very resourceful. Um, Mark uh, Jacobs, the Jake traffic engineer, is here tonight. He's re prepared two traffic reports that um, find flaws in the city's traffic analysis. Um, we also uh, submit in step 15 of our offices uh, passing out the materials that we submitted to the city at five o'clock today and which we intended to present at the public hearing tonight. So these property owners, as the four that I represent, have invested time and their money uh, to uh, show the city's process, the flaws uh, due to process, notice, um, and also the traffic uh, calculations and the assumptions underlying those. So while we are um, uh, happy to hear that you're not moving forward with the assessment, we obviously are still in a state of suspension. Uh, may we have clarification on exactly what the status of the assessment is? If the public hearing tonight is canceled, do we understand that there are no plans for assessment on these property owners? Basically, what our intent is is take a step back and start from square one from the beginning and move forward. And so, um, the assessment and the, the reports or anything from that point forward is going to just, we're starting from scratch, starting all over. So, at this point, there is no pending assessment on the property owners at this point. Um, we also ask that a copy of our materials be included within the minutes um, and be available. And we'd also ask um, to um, have to meet with city traffic folks um, so that we can present um, the rest of the story that we didn't include in our 37 pages. Sure. Sure. Right. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you coming tonight. I'm sorry that you bring me all the way down here and that we had canceled the public hearing. But in light of the information that you provided, I felt that this is the best interest for everybody involved. We thought we'd take a time out. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on anything that's not on tonight's agenda? No further public <coughs> comment? 